It can't just be, you know, somebody tweeted this. It's got to be demonstrable facts that can be laid out with evidence because that's what a court of law is going to look to, not, not just an allegation. But actual so that is a conversation that we only have thanks to Abby Grossberg and her lawsuit against Fox News of Senator Ted Cruz talking with Maria Bartiromo in the days immediately following the 2020 election. And to hear Ted Cruz tell it there, he's being totally logical and sober and reasonable. If you're gonna be claiming that this election was stolen, we're gonna need hard evidence. Interestingly, fast forward a couple of months and he's one of the guys trying to stop the election from being certified in the Senate. So something definitely changed there. Interesting that Fox initially didn't want us to see that video. But there's actually more of Ted, take a look at this. And so you know, I'm hopeful, you know, I hope when Rudy comes on, on the, the show tomorrow, he has some of those facts and I hope the legal team continues to lay out the specific evidence because that's what it's gonna take to prevail in court. Fact check. True, that is what it would take. Senator Cruz uh, was a lawyer for a long time. And what he just described is the actual process. It is interesting that behind the scenes, he sounds more tethered to reality about that process than in the way he acts in his public life. That is, that is interesting, I noticed that too. It puts <laughs> him in the company of literally everyone else at Fox News and what they actually thought about the big lie. Now, as soon as they go out there to give a speech or on the, they're on the Senate floor, they're broadcasting on Fox News, then all of a sudden they believe all of this stuff. And by the way, um, he didn't really fill in there. Ted's hopes four days after the election was that Rudy Giuliani was gonna come and was gonna lay out all the specific evidence. I think we all remember how that went. And he said that that would be what, what would be required to win in court. Well, we know that they lost dozens and dozens of times. So if Ted Cruz, was questioning whether they had the goods. And then we have a couple of months of truly embarrassing failures from the entirety of the Trump legal team. And then he emerges on the other side ready to try to overthrow the US government anyway. Then that is that is some underhanded anti-democratic and completely hypocritical behavior from Ted Cruz. Yeah, I think this story is telling of Ted Cruz. I think it's telling of Maria Bartiromo. But most especially it's telling of Republican voters. Unfortunately, so Ted Cruz behind the scenes sounds like a reasonable person. <laughs> In front of the scenes, <laughs> he seems like the least reasonable person you ever met, minus Donald Trump, right? Marjorie Green. Okay, fine. He's in the top ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but behind the scenes, he sounds like a perfectly rational, intelligent person. That's because he actually is an intelligent person. He went to like, I think I think he went to Princeton and Harvard Law or something like that. He's just a slimy, slimy actor. Like he couldn't make it in Hollywood, so he became like a cheesy political actor. So behind the scenes, he's like, Maria, you know that tweets are not evidence. <laughs> you need actual evidence to present in court. You might, we might not even have a prima facie case. You know, I would hate to go through voir dire on that. <laughs> So He'll make up it. words to prove your point, Jay. <laughs> okay. And you're like, wait, who is this guy, right? Meanwhile, he's talking to Maria Bartiromo like she's a child. Yeah. And that's because he thinks she's super dumb. And so he has to say to her, now Maria, you know tweets are not evidence. They are not admissible in court. Can you say it with me, Maria? Not admissible in court, rando tweeted. Is not evidence. Maria's like, huh? She goes on air and she's like, oh my God, there's evidence. There's tweet after tweet, right? So this does not speak well of her. And nothing speaks well of her. She, you know, that's a fourth collateral damage of the story. CNBC had her as a legitimate news anchor for like decades. She's humiliatingly unintelligent. So, anyways. Um, now to the Republican voters, the most uh, relevant folks. Ted thinks you guys don't want the truth and can't handle the truth, to quote uh, Tom Cruise. Um, or no, well, Jack Nicholson. No, that's Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> Colonel Jessup. Uh, so he's like, okay, we need real evidence. Oh, we don't have real evidence. And then he goes on TV, he's like, oh, this is outrageous what happened in the election because he knows his voters don't want the truth, they want lies. They want to be lied to, that's why he's giving them lies. So Republican voters, how about you actually ask for the truth? Mm -hmm. I know that's like a wild, outrageous thing to ask for in 
in Republican circles. But you ought to give it a shot. Who knows, maybe you'll even like it. It is remarkable, Jenk. I mean, what a great acting job it takes when you realize that your character, your 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 natural personality, and I, and I, I thought this about Ted Cruz from the beginning, that he is a reasonable guy, that he is a smart man, that he is a smart lawyer, that he understands this stuff. In order to dumb himself down and seem like he's one of these rednecks who doesn't know much, the acting job that it requires to be able to appeal to people who are low information voters, this is remarkable stuff. And to your point about being a slime ball, absolutely, because what he was acting for was the accumulation of power. He didn't really care about whether he'd get an Oscar or an award or anything like that. No, he just wanted to rise to the ranks politically. And if that meant dumbing himself down in the eyes of voters, and going along with Donald Trump, because that's the way the winds were politically blowing, even after Donald Trump had criticized Ted, his wife, and his father, he was willing to do that. That's how craven he was for political power. And so, yes, he continues acting. And to your point about Maria Bartiromo, the, the former money honey at CNBC, they would when she was at CNBC, they would just feed her the information that she would say. She didn't really know that much about economics or about Wall Street or anything like that. And so, unfortunately for her, the gig is up when she goes to Fox News because it's clear for everybody how stupid she is. And obviously clear to Ted Cruz that when he has to explain to her what basic evidence is and is not, that is, I mean, maybe we should be shocked, but maybe it's not that shocking for people who have known Maria Bartiromo through the years. Uh, really fast before we end, I feel like there needs to be a little bit of balance because both of you guys, I think, have been pretty brutal towards Maria Bartiromo. So I want to balance it out by giving the perspective of someone who's actually worked with her. Her executive producer, who we found out thanks to the leaked text messages, said that she should never be put on live TV. <laughs> I mean, that is brutal. Thanks for balancing us out in that direction. Appreciate I try to be it. fair. So much credit. I apologize. Yeah, but <laughs> guys, if you don't work in television, you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between live TV and non-line TV? No, they're saying the scripts have to be written out for her, put in the prompter, yes. and Burgundy will read anything in the prompter, but she can't do anything else. If she has to actually ask questions and interact on live TV, like the three brain cells melt. And she's like, tweets are evidence. Okay, <laughs> look, I'm being brutal towards her, but she's earned it. She's yeah. one of the top liars about the 2020 election and can't seem to tell fact from lie if her life depended on it. It's stunning to watch her struggle on live TV, trying to like connect one thought to another. She's like, how do I do this? I can't tell. And we're not the only ones who think that. Producers who work with her every day think that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.